Alrighty, so today we're going to do a quick rundown of vCenter integration into ACI. I had a good day of uh, getting some stuff set up for some demos later this week, and I, I got this kind of set up earlier in the week, so I figured it was about time to uh, do a quick recap. This is going to be not doing live configs because it's already set up, and i, I got to use it for demos later, obviously, so I can't be monkeying with it too much this weekend. Um, but we will kind of go through the steps and stuff that tripped me up, especially not being a UCS or really a vCenter guy or, you know, really an ACI guy I'm just kind of learning too so some of the things that that um, were a bit of a bit obtuse weren't weren't necessarily uh, very clear so we'll, we'll go ahead and just kind of start talking about the prereqs um, so obviously at some point you're gonna have to have connectivity between vCenter and ACI um, one of the things that kind of ended up hanging me up a little bit was that I have both out-of-band and in-band set up for management just kind of was doing that just to to test it out. I think it seems like you would maybe only want to do one or the other in production uh, based on just some of the kind of tack calls I've had with, with, with it and it's kind of got some weird behavior. Uh, but anyway, so since I do have in-band connected, there was a requirement effectively for my vCenter to be in my same in-band physical domain. And I'm not 100% sure why because it seems like if you have in-band connectivity, my in-band's got a layer three out, for example, it should have been able to kind of hop back out of a, you know, out to my 3560 that's sitting outside the fabric and route back in, worst case. But uh, so there, there, that might warrant a little bit more uh, digging around, but just know that if you're doing in-band, that was something that had to happen uh, in order for me to get this working. If you have out of band, it, it should be easy peasy, right? If you can ping stuff, well, that's, you know, pretty much all you need to be able to do. So. Uh, for now, I would say maybe just uh, ignore doing in-band since it seems kind of silly. I don't, I'm not really 100% sure why you would need it. I mean, obviously, it's nice to have management, but um, out-of-band seems to make things a lot simpler. So that, that that's just one kind of piece there. So UCS is, uh, in my environment, we've got a UCS Mini in this lab. So we obviously are connecting from the fabric, the ACI fabric, to the fabric interconnects. Uh, and the UCS Mini, they're just in the chassis. Um, so we've got some 10 gig links between there. So obviously when we're dealing with UCS, UCS is a switch effectively. The fabric interconnects our switch. They do VLANs and trunking and all kinds of sorts of fun stuff like that. So when we were talking about having connectivity from the ACI fabric into the UCS environment, which in turn you know gets passed into, in my own case, vCenter or VMware environment, ESXi, um, we've got to manage those VLANs and be able to trunk effectively. So the, the the configuration here started off simply enough. I've got two links that go to the UCS minis, one to A side, one to B side. Um, no VPCs or anything at this point, just pretty straightforward. Um, my coworker set up the, the baseline UCS stuff since I am super UCS noob, but that's all right. We'll, we'll muddle through. Um, and at first we just set up VLAN 101, right? Just something to have in, in there so that we could have a VLAN because that's kind of important. So we, we ended up putting all of our ESX boxes in band stuff on that and also dumping our vCenter on that. Uh, and the vCenter is actually running on an old C200 that's also connected to the fabric, but it's just on VLAN 101, so nothing crazy. So we'll just go ahead and hop in here and just kind of show you. Um, the vNix E0 and 1, I have just kind of, they're, they're the management effectively. They're, let's see if we can see here. Really, so you can just ACI Lab 101. It's pretty pretty nice and simple. Uh, so both of these, and they're pinned to Fabric A and Fabric B respectively. One kind of key point is that this network control policy uh, needs to allow CDP. So I just modified the default. I think by default it was deny or disable CDP. So that was one thing we had to do. Um, and then ETH2 and 3, these are the, the two NICs that I'm gonna be binding to the, the DVS once, once we kind of get to that point. So. Um, in UCS land, this is really the only thing that matters other than that CDP bit is that the VLANs that you assign, and, and we'll, we'll show them in the in the APEC here in a minute, but those VLANs that get assigned to the VLAN pool for the VMM domain must be on these NICs. So I assigned a bunch of them, so it's kind of scrolls fast because it's HTML5 and it's magical instead of Java, which is great. Uh, but so anyway, these are all of my VLANs tied to the VMM domain. These are the VLANs that um, when the APIC pushes the DVS and assigns port, creates port groups, you know, automatically behind the behind the covers, kind of. These are the VLANs that it picks from, and it does it kind of randomly. So don't just put, you know, in my case, VLAN 300 and 301. I have to test two EPGs. I just need two VLANs. Well, 
I did that at first and it picked 567 or something for the second UPG I, de I deployed. So you want to make sure that whole range is in there. Um, so that's kind of it in terms of UCS land outside of the normal setup. So we'll just go ahead and kill that guy for now. Um, so CDP enable and VLANs, that was, that's the big takeaway from UCS. Um, so in ACI land, there are some caveats and some, or some configuration requirements that were maybe not the most obvious. Um, there's a, a UCS guru has a great YouTube video. It's really, really long and really, really in-depth about setting exactly this up. So I, I, I was watching that over and over again because I was trying to speed through it and I didn't pay attention very well. I should have just paid attention the first time. It would have made my life a lot easier because he, he goes into great detail. So that's a great video to watch. Um, but anyway, so in ACI, you need LLDP between your APIC and your LEAFs, and that's that's pretty... You, you plug in your APIC, that kind of magic happens, so that's not a big deal. Um, you need CDP disabled between your fabric interconnects and your LEAFs, and you need LLDP enabled. So let's just go ahead here, and we'll look at the interface policies. Um, so we've got a... Default CDP is disabled, right? So I've got a CDP enable policy, nice and simple. LLDP, I just I mean, probably should have done that for CDP too, but I just did an enable and a disable, nice and simple. And then we'll go to policy groups. And so here we have UCS access. So this is effectively, this policy group is applied to the interfaces going from my leafs to my fabric interconnects. So CDP, the default policy is disabled. So CDP is disabled and LLDP is enabled. And that's important. And we'll talk a little bit more about that kind of when we get through it here. Um, so then, vSwitch access here. This is the other policy that I created. Uh, and effectively, this is the policy that goes between your leafs and the distributed virtual switch. So we've got CDP enabled, LLDP disabled. Uh, that's also important. And that goes into these interface overrides. So basically what happens is when we, we, have, an, we have an interface, or we'll just, just E11 on a leaf, whatever, who cares. E11 on a leaf goes to our UCS, so we've got our UCS access policy here. And so it uses this to connect to the fabric interconnects, right? Say, so, hey, LLDP is enabled, CDP is off, we're, ha we're happy, that's great. That works out nicely. But when the DVS gets deployed, and we're basically trunking off the DVS, uh, there's this kind of inception of switching <laughs> so it, so we go from the v the you know the standard v switch which i guess is just kind of like pass through to the ucs phoenix and then you, it just looks like ucs is connected to aci or vmware is connected to aci well when we add the the dvs which is running you know cdp and all this kind of fun stuff it, there's this uh, there's a weird kind of abstraction that's happening with the ucs the dvs and then the leafs and ACI uses LLDP and CDP in different roles effectively to track endpoints, right? Guests on the on the virtual environment. So I'm not I'm not I'm no expert. This is some some wizard level stuff. It's kind of confusing, but the but the gist of it is that the ACI needs to be able to talk CDP to the distributed virtual switch. And by applying this override onto the same ports that you connect to the UCS, it knows to talk to the fabric interconnects via LLDP. No CDP, right? Fabric interconnects to leaves, just LLDP. And then it uses this override policy to talk to the DVS, the, the ACI deployed DVS via CDP. So it's kind of bit obtuse. It's not the, the most logical thing in the world, but that's that's my understanding of what's going on. So it's it's not hard to configure, obviously. I mean, you just build your, your policy group, but then you apply it to the interface policy and you just select a ports, right? So that's very simple. It's just, it was maybe not very intuitive. Um, so here we are in access policies under the fabric again. The other thing that we need to do in here is create VLANs. So these are these are those VLANs that live in UCS. And I said, you know, make sure you deploy them all on the UCS because ACI is just going to pick one uh, when it deploys the new EPGs and pushes that to a port group. So you want to make sure that whole range that you've allocated to ACI is also in the UCS. And, and this also has to be dynamic allocation. I'm not sure you would really want to bother with it any other way anyway, but but that's that's important as well. Um, and then lastly, we're in, in this this little this page under fabric here. We're going to end up creating the VMM AAP. I believe that uh, this can get created when you do the VM networking kind of wizard deployment thing. So, but just know that you will have to do this, and it'll get hooked to the VMM domain. So we'll hop over to VM networking here. Um, inventory is just kind of looking at stuff, right? So we go to policy, 
and VM provider, and we can you know right click here, create a vCenter domain. It'll walk you through it. You've got to create basically two things: your your creds, and then the actual vCenter itself, which is obviously just an IP address. This data center name has to match exactly what you've got in vCenter. Um, that's important because that's where it knows how to deploy the, the the DVS. And then right here, just drop down and select the uh, admin user that I created earlier. Um, management EPG, I'm not 100% sure. I think this would probably come into play if I was using out of band um, because it's you know, picking the L3 out there. So that's that might be what that's for. Um, so then we'll hop over here into vCenter. It wants to cooperate, maybe. It's a good break for a, for a drink of beer, I guess. All right. So this is, uh, if you've done 1000V, this is totally exactly the same thing. So we're going to go to networking. And here under that that same, d the, the data center, right? This has to be the same. Uh, I just named mine vCenter1. Uh, but this is where it deploys the, the DVS. Um, and here you can see, we'll, we'll go over, hop over to the tenant here in a second. Um, but you can see that it deploys these port groups for us in the DVS automatically, right? You create an, uh, an EPG that's hooked to the VMM domain, and poof, your port groups just get deployed. Um, so you can see here Presidio, um, this is the tenant, and then demo three tier app. That's my uh, application profile that I'll be using for some demo stuff this week. And then the the last portion here, web tier, DB tier, app tier. That's the uh, that's the actual EPG name. So that's how that gets uh, gets assigned. And then obviously I, this is a core server, so I've got some name servers and, and junk in there that we'll be using later for other stuff. Um, so really it's exactly the same as the one thousand V, right? You need to add your host to the DVS. And I won't, I won't actually walk through this, but uh, my C two hundred that vCenter is on is the only thing that's not deployed to a DVS. So I won't I won't monkey with that. Um, but basically, you can just walk through that, you know, the, pretty much the clicky click wizard, and then bam, you've got some uh, some some ESX host with the the DVS deployed, and we can go here and look at networking. Pull this guy, move this guy out of the way. And like I said earlier, I've got Nix zero and one. This is just standard pin to A fabric, pin to B fabric. And I just left that as management. I didn't migrate the VM kernel just because I didn't want to deal with the pain of dealing it. Uh, I'm not a VMware guy. I'm sure it's easy for a VMware guy, but I didn't want to screw with it. Um, and then I just used Nick two and three, hooked those to vCenter, nice and easy. And then you can see here's one of my guys, one of my uh, VMs for the that's using the DVS. This is, uh, I don't even know what this guy is. This is our, our web tier, right? So he's just picking that uh, straight out of the drop down, just like it was 1000V or a regular DVS. And then we'll hop over here real quick to the tenant. Just going to show you how that happens, how that gets pushed into there. Um, so this is my uh, application profile. And here's it's a very, very beautiful application profile, as you can see. Um, we'll just pick on web tier here. Uh, so this is our web tier. Um, we can see we've got he's got a guy um, that's learned here to 255 1010. Uh, and this is what I was saying, he picked 567. So I had 300 and 301 in UCS, assuming that it would be sequential, but clearly not. So just uh, that's that's a thing to look out for. Um, and then here we go into the domains, and you can just add a VMM domain association, and poof, I just did immediate because. No big deal. And then as soon as you deploy that, uh, in this case, this is just an Ubuntu desktop, nice and simple. Given an IP, and it shows up under the under the operational tab here. And you obviously can ping your ping your gateway because the ACI fabrics uh, auto magically making your gateway once you've got your uh, your networks configured down here under your VRF or excuse me, under your bridge domain. So you can see that this is this is a subnet that I've got them going on. It's a public subnet, so it's advertised out to my 36, 3560. So I've got full, you know, access to everything and then build some contracts and and then you're kind of off to the races. So that's that's a really high level overview of how to do it. It's it's not terribly complicated, but it, like I said, there are some of those things that kind of caught me off guard, um, especially you know monkeying around in UCS, not really knowing anything about UCS. So that was fun. Um, and then the the CDP LDP, you know, 
which which one's where that was a little bit confusing so hopefully this this will help and hopefully you won't run into that and then again UCS Guru has a really really good video on that so you should check that out as well it's easy to find on on YouTube just, you know UCS Guru VMM I think was it should be the first hit there so hopefully that helped see you guys later